XLCDM. All of these are letters, but also they were numbers used by the Romans in old times. And these are their values. First of all, why they used letters as numbers? And why specifically these letters and not A, B, C or something else? Why it must be I, V and X and all those? That order doesn't make any sense, but there is an explanation for this. Let's start with the Greeks. How did the Greeks wrote their numbers? These are the five first letters of the Greek alphabet. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta and Epsilon. And the Greeks also used their letters as numbers. The first letter of the alphabet was 1, the second was 2, the third was 3, and the fourth was 4, and so on. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in the alphabetical order. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Maybe the Romans did the same thing? As you can see here, this is the alphabet used by the Romans. We can easily observe that the Roman numerals don't follow the alphabetical order. I is in the middle of the alphabet, then it goes to the end, V and X, then C at the start, so it's a pretty random order. Which shows that they don't use the alphabetical order. Maybe there is something to do with the way they wrote the name of the numbers. Just like if we used O to write 1, F to write 5, and T to write 10. If they used that method, they would produce pretty random sequences of letters. So let's see how the Romans called each number. In the language of the Romans, in this case, Latin, one was called Unus. As you can see, it starts with an U, not an I. So it doesn't make any sense to use I. Five was called Quinque. So again, it doesn't start with a V. Ten was called Decem. Again, it doesn't start with an X. By the way, the word decade in English came from the word decem. The word for 50 is quinquaginta. So again, it doesn't start with an L. The word for 100 is centum. Again, it doesn't start with actually. This time, it starts with a C. Okay, this is the only one that works out. 500 is called quingenti. And the thousand is called mille. Again, it worked. It actually starts with an M. But as you can see, the Romans chose the seven letters to become numbers, not because the way they spoke the name of the numbers. It is something else. So what is it? Let's take a look at this map. Here is Rome by around 400 years BC. And to the north of Rome was the Etruscans. It was there that our story began. Our story begins with the daily life of shepherds at this period. I really need seven sheep. Can I have some of yours? Okay, just pay me. Uh, can I pay later? No, because I won't remember how many sheep I get to you. So many people ask for my ship already, I can't keep track. Uh, don't worry, just write the amount on that stick. That stick is called a tally stick. It was used in that period to keep track of amounts. Amounts of sheep, for example. Let's see it closer. How do we write the seven sheep as the shepherd wants? That's pretty simple. We just need to mark this stick with a line and that line is one sheep. And then two sheep, three sheep, four sheep, five, six, seven. So that's the number seven. So each one of the shepherds will keep one stick for them with this number, just to remember of the seven sheep. 
and that's a pretty easy and obvious system to write numbers. One ship, one line. Two ship, two line. It's pretty obvious. Let's test it out a little bit. I'll give to you a challenge. Can you tell what the number is? I'll show you a number. Just tell me as fast as you can what the number is. Are you ready? What is this number? Yes, it is 3. What is this number? That's 4. 6. Yes, pretty easy. But what number is this? It will take a little longer for you to figure it out, because larger numbers are just more complicated to deal with. The shepherds saw that problem and decided to solve. Let's see how. We just start normally. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then, on the fifth stroke, we add another line to it. So now, when we see that symbol, we know that we've counted up to 5. Let's see if it's easier to read a number now. What number is this? So we have 5 here and then another 5. So 5 plus 5 is 10, then 15, 20 and there are 3 remaining. So 20 plus 3 is 23. So yes, it's really easy to represent a number now. And then they decided to do even better. Here is 5 again, right? After 5 comes 6, 7, 8, 9. Then they created a special symbol for 10. So can you answer what number is this? It's pretty simple. Here is 10, 20, 30. So it's exactly 30. So the first shepherd keeps that number with him. And the other shepherd just noticed that he doesn't need to write that many symbols in his stick. He can just write x, x, x. As he already knows that each x represents 10, he just needs to write 3 x's. A lot easier to write. To summarize, 1 is just a vertical line, 5 is just a line close to another line. 10 is just a crossed line, just like an X. But the Etruscans wanted some symbols for larger numbers, so they decided to create more. They took the symbol for 5 and added a line through the middle, and made the symbol for 50, because 50 is 5 tenths. They also took the symbol for 10 and added a line through the middle to make a 100. And these five numbers are the numbers used by the Etruscans. This exact moment is when the Romans appear. They saw the numbers used by the Etruscans and decided just to copy them. Copying is fine, but let's make it less obvious. And then they decided just to change a little bit. They just rotated the numbers, just to look a little bit different. But the Romans are not satisfied. They want more symbols for even larger numbers. So they decided to create a symbol for a thousand. Using some logic, they looked at the number 10. 10 is just an X. 100 is an X, but with a line through it. So a thousand must be an X with a circle around it. And with a little bit of time, the Romans also rotated the number a thousand and became just like this. And as you can see, we have a symbol for 5, for 50, but we don't have for 500. So they decided to create one. And as the symbol of a thousand is a circle, the symbol for 500 must be half a circle, because 500 is half of a thousand. Makes a lot of sense. And as the time was passing, the Romans started forgetting about the Etruscan origin. They looked at the number 1, 5 and 10 and started thinking they were letters, their letters, I, V and X, because they were so similar. Also 500 was so similar to the letter D, that also became the letter D, and 50 hundred and a thousand eventually became letters too. How? 
let's see start with 50 with some time number 50 started to look like this just an arrow pointing downward and because it was easier to write they made the number 50 become flat it looks like an inverted T at this point and with a little bit more time it just started to look like an L and that's why 50 became an L now we need to know about a hundred because this symbol doesn't look like a C at all so how it became a C so this is what happened to a hundred it started bending and became more rounded forming that symbol that looks like an I between two C's and that is pretty hard to write takes a lot of time some of the Romans to make it simple just wrote one of the C's either this one or this one and with some time they needed to decide between one of these two and they chose this one because it looked like a C and the word for a hundred is cantum so the word starts with a C that makes a lot of sense for them and what about a thousand Someday a Roman was reading some Greek text and he found this Greek letter, the letter phi. And as he looked at this letter, he observed that this letter is very similar to the number a thousand. So he just replaced the number a thousand by this symbol. And with some time, these extra parts were removed, becoming a symbol like this. And to simplify even further, they made the symbol for a thousand become this symbol, the symbol of infinity. But at the time, it was the symbol for a thousand. Then it became less rounded, just like this. And eventually it became the letter M, because it was similar to M and a thousand in Latin was called mille. So after all of this, we can conclude that all Roman numerals are letters, but not because it was intentional to be that way. It is because of the evolution that this system took. And as a curiosity, the Romans not only have these seven letters, they also have the letter S, which is a half. Because in Latin, the language of the Romans, they said like semis. And also, they could use the letter N to mean zero, because in Latin, zero was pronounced nulla. So thanks for watching the video. Go watch the last video if you want to know the origin of every letter in the modern alphabet, like the letter A, B, C, 